Hello everyone. Day is very mild today. I'd even say above freezing. Spring's definitely here. Today I wanted to talk about a story from uh, the northwest coast, Pacific coast of North America and what it may mean for us today, what it means for me personally, what I think it could mean for society at large. That story is called Raven Brings the Light. stayed that way if it weren't for the cunning trickery of the raven who uh, decided that he wanted light, light would help him for his scavenging. So he decided to try to go and trick the sky father into giving him the light. He succeeded in doing that by transforming himself into a pine needle at the time that uh, the sky father's daughter was drinking in the stream. Pine needle came into the water and that the sky, that the daughter was gathering in a bucket and she drank the water. Pine needle got inside her belly and she became pregnant and strangely enough gave birth to a child, raven child, and the raven was able to um, charm the mother and grandfather and sky father and who, who ended up giving him all the toys that he wanted to play with. And after having um, charmed them, he said that he wanted to play with the box on the shelf that contained the light. Other than, if he didn't get the box, he would complain, he would cry. And the Sky Father gave him everything that he wanted, but he didn't want to give him the light. Though, at the insistence of his daughter, he did give him one box, but it, as it turns out, there were several boxes. Uh, with more and more light concentrated w within each one. So Raven Child played with one box, he opened the box, and some stars came out, starlight came out. Stars went into the sky, he released them. Sky Father's getting nervous, because the Raven Boy's wanting another box. He gave him a, another box, and then moonlight came out. The moon went into the sky, until the last box was there that Raven insisted on playing with. He wanted that and nothing else. And the daughter didn't see any reason why he couldn't play with it. She didn't understand why her father wanted to keep the light there. But the father said, no, the light is mine. The light stays here. And there are many speculations, different variants about why the father wanted to keep the light. Some say that it's because he didn't know whether um, his daughter was beautiful or ugly and he didn't want to find out because things were easier if he let things if things were all potential just uh, okay lights for himself life lights kept away uh, he didn't want to find out if whether she was ugly another version says that he didn't want to lose her because if it's light outside then, uh, then her, his daughter is going to go out into the world leave home uh, find a partner things like that Anyway, he wanted to keep the, the idea is that he wants to keep the daughter at his place and not let her grow up and go out. Um, anyway, um, he does give the Raven Boy the last box, which he plays with. He says, "But you have to stay. You have to keep it here." So at first, the Raven Boy is playing with it inside the house, and everything looks all fine. And until all of a sudden, he transforms into a bird. He transforms back into a raven, takes the sun, and flies out. Some versions of the story end like that. Other versions have there be a chase. I like the version with the chase uh, because there's this dynamic dynamism now. Now the, the light's being chased by uh, the Sky Father who takes an eagle form and goes after him trying to get the light back. Uh, and then there's this, they go into a circular, a circular formation into, into orbit. Light goes around the earth and um, the, all the living creatures beneath 
are happy. Every, they can see now and they go out and there's a glorious life and, and they see all the land, all the water and everything's great. They can, they can eat, they can fish, they can hunt, they can, they can, they can live. And uh, in this uh, version, uh, after a while, the raven realizes that he can't keep the light just for himself because otherwise the chase is never going to end, so he just throws the sun out there in orbit, tosses it, and it keeps on following that cycle day and night. And I like that idea because uh, there's that dynamism that um, is the opposite of the way things were before, static static potential but not uh, actualized where everything is kept in place by the Sky Father who's afraid. And I think this is my interpretation of it, but I think there's elements of those three characters, both in in the world at large, in the cosmos, and in our psyches, elements of the Sky Father who wants things to stay the way they are, who's afraid things should stay the way they are, even at the risk of not seeing what could be beautiful, not seeing what could be life-giving and life-fulfilling. There's the life potential, which is the daughter, who's there, but needs to be set free. And then there's the trickster who puts things into motion by, 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 by tricking the high one into getting what he wants, can be out of selfish uh, desires to have the light for himself, but in so doing, he puts into play this sort of dynamic tension between the the person who holds things, the the the, the, the authoritarian uh, guardian of the way things are and the way things always have been, and on the other hand, uh, this playful creature who wants to see what can be. And so, yeah, I think those things are at play, especially now, and in society at large. And uh, that's what I've been thinking about the past few, the past few weeks. So three parts. What does that mean for me personally? I'd say uh, the old man in the sky is the part of me that wants to continue defining himself um, with regard to others first. So the person who wants to, who sees someone with a strong charismatic energy and says, okay, I want to be like him, I want to be like that, that's someone who is strong and, and, and has a powerful energy, so I need, I need to be like that. Or who could... Um, when thinking about what do I believe on a specific issue, looks to um, a broad political ideology or uh, uh, an already defined um, religious or spiritual system that says this explains the world from beginning to end. And it's easy to take on because things make sense. There's meaning there. Um, But that doesn't do very much for spontaneity. And uh, that's what I've realized over the years, and that's what I've um, learned that I need spontaneity. So the so the old man in the sky is that tendency to want to um, hold on to energy from someone else and to define myself either for or against something that's there, um, and to take it on really strongly because the fear is that if I didn't do that. Uh, I'd be swept away by energy that's stronger than myself and I wouldn't be able to uh, express myself eloquently or stand on my own two feet. And uh, all of that is hiding the true potential of, okay, what could be done? What, what kind of, um, how could I speak? How could I relate to others? Uh, what is there? That's the, the part that's uh, the, 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 the woman who's being sheltered away. And the raven there is kind of like, okay, uh, I personally have to, I have to give it a shot. I have to take a look at, okay, what's the light that's being protected by this old man? Because the tradition 
is not all negative. It's not all something that uh, that that's that's doing things only from a space of pure evil. It's all the fear is understandable, uh, but you can't let it get too far. You can't let it become 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 uh, set in stone. So there uh, is a way of being that's just like okay, uh, I can totally uh, feel something else. I can totally. Uh, understand something, embody something else, which is, has its seeds of light in there. So, play with it. Play with that. I, sh I, I mean, I'm not saying that I'm doing that yet, but that's what I'm telling myself in in talking about this now. So that's what the the, the little little trickster has to do. Has to has to has to do with that. Take the light out of the old man's hand and hands and see what he's hiding and just throw it across the sky see how he interacts with it then and on a societal level I've been thinking a lot about um, both the economy and the fact that there are so many people in extended care facilities um, elders who have been dying in in North America and uh, I've been thinking about the, the the old man in the sky here is maybe this fear of what could be lost if the economy collapses and it's a big fear it's a legitimate fear do we really need to go back to an economy that places such an emphasis on production capacity that it's normal to not try to find other ways of interacting with elders uh, once they've retired then Shipping them, sh shipping them off, and uh, yeah, I'm not talking about the place that I'm currently living in, Nunavik, um, where I believe there's a much more, much healthier relation to elders. But down south, and in places that are commonly generalized as being the West, even though I don't really like that, the, too much use of that term. It's, uh, the idea is that okay, once the, the, the nuclear family is all that there is and then once someone is beyond productive age then um, it's better for the, 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 the adults to not have to have two generations to take care of they already have their children to take care of and so uh, they need to work they need to produce and they're the sole providers for the kids the sole educators too so it's better for the elders to be in a place where they get supposedly uh, care the care that they need um, I understand the fear of losing everything if the economy collapses but I think the creative potential that woman that the old man wants to hide wants to hide from the light is a different kind of relationship that can be reinvented or invented from scratch in regions of, of the south um, and the west um, that involve okay, interacting differently and, and, and incorporating the knowledge that uh, previous generations have acquired. Incorporating it, uh, accepting, discussing that, uh, because um, the potential of growth of our society and with our society, our economy, even though that can be different, uh, the, the, the form that'll take can be different, the growth for, for our society uh, depends on the ability of sharing and learning from uh, different generations, different different uh, generations' experiences. So I'd say that uh, little trickster Raven could get into that uh, fear of losing economies box, take out the light and see what see what it's hiding, see what the old man's hiding, and throw it across the sky and. Okay, how's the old man gonna follow? Is the old man gonna follow? And what else will be shown from sending the light across the sky that maybe the, the daughter, the creative potential, is going to like and is going to bring into life? So those are some of the thoughts that I think uh, the Raven Brings the Light story can give us today in this day and age.
both for me personally and on a collective level. I'd be interested in talking about this with anyone who has other ideas, whether or not you agree with that. And I'm very interested in seeing what other stories have to say about issues of the day-to-day. -day. 